What's up? I'm Gilbert El Nino Melendez, and you're watching Fan TV. TV Gaming here with Gilbert Melendez and we just wanted to talk a little bit about the Nate Diaz Conor McGregor fight uh, I have a question for you uh, regarding the fight do you think that uh, Conor McGregor has underestimated Nate Diaz's jiu-jitsu skills uh, it's a possibility you know who knows what the mind games are the strategy but um, I do believe that Conor is confident you know like he really believes he's the best in the world and uh, and it's possible that he may be uh, underestimating the whole MMA game of Nate. You know what I mean? This, you know, no matter how good you are at your your cartwheels and your gymnastics and how you're working that, it doesn't it doesn't uh, deny the fact that Nate Diaz has been training martial arts and jiu-jitsu and he's a black belt for the last 10, 12 years as well as an MMA fighter with all kinds of experience. This is a real fighter with real skills. And uh, and I think it is a possibility that Conor McGregor is overlooking that. Most definitely. Uh, who, who do you think is a better trash talker? Oh, the better trash talker, you know, it goes goes back ways. But if it, if you want an organic trash talker, I give it to Nate Diaz. But if you look at it, you know, Conor McGregor's out there shadow boxing in the mirror, making his little cholo, uh, his little cholo analogies with Nate. You know, teaching it. He's practicing this stuff. You know, yeah. he's practicing his nursery little rhymes. More rehearsed. Little more rehearsed. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, that is great, and he makes me laugh, and I respect his game and what he's doing it. But Nate, you know, is straight from the heart, and you know, and straight real, and uh, you know, and I was I always choose Nate over anybody. How do you feel about the, uh, the the weight class that was decided upon and whether or not they should have dropped down or what they did at 170? Um, you know, I think it's pretty cool they came to an agreement at 170. You know, I believe Nate was willing to do whatever it had to take. He would have did 155. But considering the circumstances and how they approached it with him, it turned out to be 170. And I think that's great for Nate. You know, I think uh, I've trained with Nate when he's like in competition weight for 155s. And then when he's out of competition weight, still in great shape, but just a bigger man. And he feels like a different person. You know, he's more manageable at 55s, but at 70s, I'm like, like you know, especially when it comes to the striking department at 70s, uh, he's just overwhelming and big and durable. And I think that's gonna that's gonna prove to be a you know a mistake at the end of the day for Connor. Definitely. Do you think that the fight is gonna Nate's gonna try to uh, stand and trade, or do you think he's gonna try to finish the fight on the ground? You know, I think Nate lets the fights always happen organically. It's like he doesn't have like a you know of like oh I'm gonna force the takedown or I'm only gonna keep it on my feet. He fights and and he's aggressive and you know we have to start on our feet. So I believe he's gonna start on the feet and if somehow they're in close quarters and he's grabbing range. He'll he'll look for the grab, look for a hip toss, and if it's not there go right back to the striking, but I don't think he's going to be stuck on, I got to get the takedown, 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 and, and that's when it becomes, a fight becomes ugly, when you're like chasing the takedown, you know? 100%. Yeah, I made that mistake. What happens with that, yeah. Yeah, I made that mistake against Pettis a little bit. I was too over-aggressive with the takedown, then, you know, you get in choke. It's like, you got to, he's going to trust the striking no matter what, and if it happens organically, it will. 100%. Um, now, if, if Nate Diaz can shut down Conor McGregor, uh, what, what fight would you like to see next? Oh wow, man! I mean, that's up for Nate. You know what I mean? There's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of things he can do. You know, he can become a super fight type of guy now, where you can see him fight, uh, you know, someone you just want to see. You know, just a great fight. You know, there's different names and different weight classes. But uh, if he wins this, and you know, he probably gets an immediate title shot at uh, Rafael dos Anjos, a rematch. That would be great. How did you feel about uh, the, the dropout of Rafael de Sanjos and were you excited about that fight? I think this is a better matchup in my opinion with the range, but uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, I think it is. I think it's more of a challenging fight for Conor McGregor just stylistically. You know, I, I was actually going to pick Conor McGregor in the de Sanjos fight. A lot of people weren't, but mm -hmm. just, you know, because he does have the longer range. He is a bigger fighter. I think his counter punches would be effective and, uh, you know, and he might be able to rock de Sanjos, but not an easy task to, to do. But um, you know, I was uh, I was thrilled about that, and um, yeah, you know, and uh, I'm happy that Nate gets that fight over over him. I know a lot of people were talking about the Cerrone possibility and how he's been on a streak lately, but um, I honestly think the Nate Diaz fight makes more sense, being that you watch the Nate Diaz Cerrone fight. It makes more sense for the uh, than the Cerrone fight, in and, my opinion. And, and that's what uh, and that's what Conor McGregor said. He said, you know, I, I assessed it all. You know, um, you know, I try to get Aldo, I try to get Frankie. They said no, and um, you know, and, and Nate beat beat uh, you know beat Cowboy. So you know, Nate was in line. That's how I saw it. You know, and uh, I'm glad it worked out that way. And I think match stylistically, it's, it's just it's it's these guys are both boxers. You know, yeah. so I think everyone wants to kind of see that. It's gonna be more toe to toe boxing action, which is a different thing. I think it's gonna be. 
a slugfest. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I, I want. Hope so. Yeah. Um, is there any, any any comments you'd like to make about the corner? Or what do you, how's your corner for the fight? Yeah, you know, I think uh, you know, I think it'll be good. I don't know. I'm gonna head out there today. You know, I'll be analyzing for ESPN out there, but I'll keep in a close look and and uh, talking with Nate out there. And I've already seen pictures online. And it looks like he's doing good out there. And uh, you know, and I'll go join the team and get some training with them and, and go go see him out there. So I'll be showing my support today. How much is uh, Nick getting involved with uh, preparing Nate for the fight? You know, I'm sure he's there. He's already with them. You know, there's not much time to prepare for the fight, right? You know, you've been, uh, you got 12 day notice. So, uh, but I know that as soon as that fight happened, they've been together, you know, at the press conference and, and uh, you know, everywhere just kind of backing them up and, and the training picture and all that. And they've been working together for years. So uh, you'll definitely be involved big time. Would you say that Nate Diaz is kind of always ready for a fight? Always ready. Always. I think that's the hashtag right there. Always ready. You know, and this is the kind of guy that, you know, um, you go, you know, you might be doing something one day and you get a call like Nate's like, hey, I'll take that fight. He can wake up and be like, OK, I need to go run seven miles. I'm going to wake up and run seven miles so I can feel feel alive again. You know, and not many people can just wake up and run seven miles and bike 30 and, and then go swim, you know, just in a day just to be like, OK. You know, and I shook out the cobwebs. It's time for training. I'm like, that you you did that already. You know, that's that's amazing. You know. I think it's great that he's he's fighting kind of around his. You know, it's like he's not gonna have to cut drastically. So he's already gonna, even though it's a short notice fight, uh, he's already conditioned so great, and he's not gonna have to do anything super drastic to his body to make this fight happen. Yeah, I think that's great. I think he's gonna be able to feel better and feel more his natural self and not have that stress of cutting a lot of weight. You know. And, uh, and again, you know, that means he can grow bigger and be the bigger guy that he is, you know, and I'm telling you, man, that guy is a big 155 pounder, you know what I mean? Like I, I, you know, you know, I wake up 169, 168, this guy's, you know, this guy's probably waking up 182, you know what I mean? Yeah. As a 55 pounder, you know? 100%. I have a question for you just about weight cutting in the UFC in general. I mean, after watching that kind of that weird Bellator fight with Kimbo and Dada. Uh -huh. How do you feel about weight cutting and uh, the standards in the UFC and uh, what, what kind of changes could be made? You know, um, they're working on that and it's almost like trial and error, you know, as a fighter, you know, you gotta be professional, you gotta do it right. It could be dangerous if you don't do it right. You know, I think fighters need to educate themselves and, uh, you know, and, um, like the you know, yeah, the IV band, you know, I mean, you know, that might be tough for fighters. IV is a good thing, you know, it depends how much you're doing and maybe guys shouldn't be cutting that much weight. Yeah. You know, there's ways to do it and it's just like, hey, if you, you know, if it's going to harm you, you should be careful, like you know what I mean? Shortcuts. Yeah, avoid it. Yeah, just, just, you know, just, just go up the weight class you need to and manage it. But it's tough. You know, there's some people that are like, man, you know, Nate's the kind of guy that's like, you know, I need to fight. If there's a 162 weight pound class, that'd be perfect for me to maybe add more weight classes. That could be a simple solution as well, too, you know, and uh, have a super heavyweight, you know, for those guys, you know, and uh, but guys should know how to do it. Like once you're over this and you're just fighting. Yeah, like yeah, that. you're cutting 40 weights, you know, or yeah. yeah, you're cutting 40 pounds over 230, what is it, over 205 is a heavyweight, you know what yeah. I mean? So they can do super heavyweight over 265 yeah, or something. You have, like, you have guys that are right around there fighting guys that are 60 pounds heavier. Yeah, exactly. So maybe some more weight classes would be the simple solution, you know what I mean? And that'd be fun, too. I think boxing has a lot of weight classes, you know, cool. and I think that'd be fun, you know. Cool. Thank you. What, what, what's going on new? at uh, El Nino Training Center. You know, El Nino Training Center is doing great. We've got a lot of up-and-coming fighters out here, you know, and, um, you know, and anyone can come out here and train. You know, all walks of life are welcome and stuff. we got a new Scrap Pack fight shot open, opening up and uh, scrappack.com, SK, SK, not SC. And, uh, you know, you could uh, shop online, get all their stuff, or uh, come check us out at Stone Town Mall here in San Francisco. Very cool, man. Yeah.